Hey everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by the Minecrafters. This is Captain Jack and in this tutorial video we're going to be talking about the generators added in by the Extra Utilities mod. So let's get started. <laughs> So the first time I saw one of these generators, it basically looked like something that um, you could buy at Home Depot or some kind of home improvement store, and uh, it looks like the one that my grandfather had in his garage since I can remember. But uh, the ones that you buy from Home Depot can't process Enderman excrement, so uh, let's get started because you're going to want to hear about these things here. All right, a few things to know before we get started. Each generator can hold 500,000 RF. That stands for Redstone Flux. When broken, they will retain their energy, which is awesome. And uh, they will interface well with many other different mods, such as Thermal Expansion Item Duct. And these lovely signs are brought to you by the Advanced Information Panels from Nuclear Control, which we have a tutorial on. You can check it out on our site. And we can grab a cookie for the way. Just kidding. It's full of meat! Alright, the first one we have here is the Survivalist Generator. And this is the most basic of all the generators. It will produce 5 RF per tick, and 1 coal will create... 160,000 redstone flux over 24 minutes and 40 seconds. Now you can see on the interface inside here, we have a spot to drop a piece of coal. It'll tell us how much um, time is remaining on that uh, piece of coal. So 26 minutes it will burn for. This is an extremely efficient yet slow generator. And uh, the power level, which will be more and more evident now what this means as we go through the tutorial. Over here it shows that we have uh, a possible uh, containment of 500,000 RF. And you can see that the RF is slowly building up. So it's coming pretty slow there okay there's the pattern um, and this is just an example of how it can interface with other mods such as ender io which connect to the uh, pretty end of a pig and uh, this is from thermal expansion you can connect uh, machines directly to here to uh, fill up anything that you might want this one's currently burning okay the power looks like it's going into here okay very good the next generator we have is the pink generator and it will use anything that uh, uses pink in its recipe or some kind of pink wool or pink dye um, to generate 40 redstone flux per tick, and it will make um, 16,000 redstone flux for one piece of uh, whatever type of pink object that you have. There's the recipe on the right there. Let me just show you something neat that you can do with this stuff here. I hooked up a rancher to um, this sheep here with a bucket of force on the ground, and uh, basically it is uh, shearing the sheep with a uh, force shear and it's generating uh, pink wool extremely quickly. I'm not sure how much thing, how much this thing will power, and it's a little bit hacks. Um, <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. It's borderline cheating. You can see how fast it's growing because of that forest. Um, but here we go, it's generating a bunch of uh, redstone flux, and you could probably hook up a bunch of different uh, ones, these pink generators, to uh, one single rancher. So I'm not sure how much power you can get out of that, but uh, here's a little practical application for the pink generator. The furnace generator will produce 80 RF per tick, and it will consume anything that a normal furnace can use. Your pattern's right there on the right of my screen, and uh, this will not the fuel will not last uh, nearly as long as uh, the fuel in the survivalist generator. However, it will produce power a lot faster. Okay, and you can see that the power level is 80, so it's significantly higher and uh, faster than its predecessor. So my RF is filling up there. Uh, furnace generator is pretty basic. The high temperature furnace generator is uh, much like its uh, predecessor, the furnace generator, which is included in the pattern that you use to make it, um, except that the more uh, fuel you have in there, the more RF you will produce. So it will produce anywhere from 40 to 1960 redstone flux per tick, and uh, one coal will start by producing uh, 2000 redstone flux, but feeding this generator fuel will slowly increase its power output. Um, if you keep it heated up. It almost acts like an induction furnace from IC2. So if I put one piece of coal in there, it's only going to last a couple seconds, and it's not going to generate very much. Oh, it generated 4,000, actually. I should correct that. But in any case, if I put a whole stack in here, it'll consume the entire stack, and it will increase the power level to 43. And you can see that it's making uh, redstone flux at a fairly decent rate. Okay, And the more that I put in there, um, the higher the power level, and the faster that I will increase um, my redstone flux production. So I'm up to 67. The highest I've gotten this thing is about 1400. And if I put an entire stack of that in there, um, 900, let me see. Okay, and you can see how fast this is building up. Um, this is not actually creatable yet. But in any case, you can see how this works. Um, this is going to burn for 13 hours and four minutes, okay? And now that would have been a lot of 
coal equivalent, but I just wanted to show you how the power level increases and uh, how the power increases with it. The lava generator, which is basically the exact same thing as a magmatic dynamo from thermal expansion, will produce 80 RF per tick, and uh, one bucket will produce 160,000 redstone flux over 100 seconds. Your pattern is right there on the right. This can be hooked up with a pipe from thermal expansion, just like this, a liquiduct, and it will fill up its interface right here on the left. It'll tell you the power level and how much time it has remaining. And this generates a fairly decent amount of power. That's the lava generator. The heated redstone generator is a pretty cool block. It will require a lot of redstone to make, and it will require um, lava and redstone or destabilized, red, destabilized redstone to run. Um, if you choose to go the lava and redstone route, it will give you 160 RF per tick. So that's double um, the lava one that we just looked at there. And uh, 10 redstone and one lava bucket will produce 800,000 redstone flux over 250 seconds. Um, and it's 100 millibuckets per piece of redstone. And what you'll basically have to do is put, let's say, 10 redstone up here. And it won't operate unless it has lava. So I'm going to apply one bucket of lava by right clicking this machine and it's going to give us a power level of 160 and it's going to start generating uh, redstone flux and it's going to give us a decent amount so 160 RF per tick is pretty good however the destabilized, res destabilized redstone option is a little bit better albeit maybe more expensive it will produce 320 redstone flux per tick and it will create 16 million redstone flux over 4 minutes and 10 seconds now you can uh, hook this directly up to a fluid duct and the magma crucible um, with some redstone or blocks of redstone there will make that destabilized redstone that you can pump directly into your heated redstone generator. The potion generator has a little bit different uh, way of calculating its power output and you have the recipe right there on the right. Basically um, if you're familiar with the brewing um, situation here with these brewing stands um, there's different steps that you have to take to make certain um, potions and the more steps that it takes to make the potion, basically the more power it will produce. So here's a power calculation right up here. Um, each brewing step needed to make the potion doubles the energy output. So um, you take the amount of steps and then double it and then multiply it by 20 um, redstone flux per tick. And that will give you the total power output. So I've thrown a little bit, a few of them up here. This should be a power level 80. I don't know why I didn't fill that out. Um, but this is just a regular awkward potion. And it made me uh, 64,000. Um, RF per tick. Um, regeneration 2 potion gave me 128,000 and uh, a bunch of these gave me 128,000. Invisibility is the, I didn't test all of them, but this is the, the highest one that I had found. Um, same power level, but it will last a little bit longer, so I guess there's an extra step in the invisibility potion, which uh, I can uh, believe for sure. And that gave me 256 thousand redstone flux okay so that's the uh, that's the potion generator um, it's a pretty neat little mod maybe not as practical as the rest of them but uh, if you are a magician you might want to use this the ender generator is really simple and this will use that enderman excrement to make two million redstone flux over 20 minutes and 50 seconds it will produce 80 rf per tick and the pattern is right there on the right all it will take is one single ender pearl up top there and uh, you're good to go. Solar generator requires one block of a diamond, which is pretty expensive. Some blue dyes, some nether quartz, and uh, the typical redstone and uh, furnace uh, block in the pattern to make. And this will basically generate uh, energy from the sun. Now, there are a bunch of different variables um, this machine uses in determining how much redstone flux that it creates. And they're basically right here on the board. What you need to know from this board is that this block cannot generate energy and discharge energy at the same time. So you can't make energy and throw it into an energy storage at the same time. Um, and in order to discharge energy, it either needs to be nighttime, um, and you can see at the bottom there, it will automatically transmit when the sunlight level drops to zero, um, or you need to provide a redstone signal to this block to make it so that it empties out its internal buffer. So right now it's filling up um, uh, at a fairly decent pace, okay? And this is basically free renewable energy, and you can see that charging right here. There's a little uh, interface there. Um, there's a bunch of different um, carpent, or, or there's a bunch of different daylight centers, sensors, should I say, um, that you can use to provide a redstone signal to these guys. And you basically have to reverse this signal. I didn't bother to do that because it's just the tutorial. But you can see that uh, this is sensing daylight, so it's not producing power. This one uh, has no limits on it. There's no daylight sensor, so it's producing uh, power at a decent pace. Um, 
and same thing with this one here now if i was to apply a uh, vanilla daylight sensor here we would stop producing redstone flux and basically it would allow this to empty out um, you can also hook these up to a timer of some sort or some sort of uh, redstone logic circuit basically to discharge power every x amount of seconds so if you want to pause your screen right there to read that that's fine by me otherwise we are moving on the TNT generator will make 80 RF per tick, and if you use gunpowder inside of it, it will create 64,000 RF, and if you use TNT, it will create 384,000 RF per tick. And this is a fairly dangerous little block here, so I moved it away from the rest of my stuff because it kept blowing my signs off the wall. Uh, I'm going to go through this little block right here. Okay, Go to my testing zone. Okay, I'm going to throw a piece of gunpowder in here, and you can see that it's going to start uh, kind of blowing up all over the place, and I'm going to throw some uh, TNT in there. And uh, these uh, make little explosions, and they will blow minor things off of your walls if you do have them um, pretty close to this machine. Um, I did find that it doesn't really harm you, or it doesn't harm you in the version that I'm using. Um, just be forewarned, though, it may harm you, which is kind of whack, but in any case. Oh, there we go. It hit me. So it probably would have damaged me a little bit. i um, not sure if these machines actually explode or not, and I'm not sure if anybody's sure if they explode or not, but... Uh, I don't think they will, and I hope they won't, but you can uh, make a lot of power off of TNT and off of gunpowder if you have maybe a creeper mob farm or something like that. Um, my explosions are going off all over the place. So that is the TNT generator. The culinary generator is a pretty cool <laughs> little generator. Basically what it does is it uses food to create redstone flux, and there's your pattern there. Um, I put a bunch of different food items on the board here, but uh, it has a weird little... Um, equation to calculate how much redstone flux that it creates. So basically, um, depending on the type of food and depending on depending on how many hunger bars it refills when you consume it normally, um, it'll that's what will determine its power output. So the the equation is hunger bars filled times 10 redstone flux equals the total power, and then the saturation um, will determine the time. So you do the saturation times 30 seconds equals the burn time. You can see that I got 7,200 uh, redstone flux from an apple, 14 from a carrot. Um, this is a baked potato, 21,600. Um, this is a piece of steak, 38,400. And finally, um, I use this uh, berry surprise thing here to make 42,000. You cannot, unfortunately, use ambrosia, which is like the most best legit food ever in the world. Um, but in any case, this is the culinary generator. I created this wacky little contraption to, and let me go grab some bowls because I know I will need them in a minute. Um, I made this wacky little contraption <laughs> to show you like something that you could do with the culinary generator, like kind of a set it and forget it type deal. Um, basically what I have is the thermal expansion um, activators attached to blackberry, malberry, and raspberry bushes. So basically they're simulating a right click for me. They're harvesting the berries or throwing them through these thermal uh, expansion item ducts, putting them into a, oh, there's one right there. Just saw a berry go through. I used a crappy one so you could see it, but it's not really happening too often because they don't grow too often. But in any case, um, I've collected this many berries so far. So I do have a bunch of them. And uh, all you need to do for this little contraption is supply this with, um, some some bowls and they'll get sucked down into my little auto workbench here which is the most ghetto thing imaginable um, but in any case it works and it's just for demonstration purposes only I wouldn't build something like this I don't think on the regular server but it will craft this and what it'll do is it'll shoot it down and it will throw it into my culinary generator and it will start producing power and you can see that I've created 133,000 um, redstone flux off of my berry bushes and this is going to start slowly um, pushing more and more out and as soon as it has room it'll throw another one in there so this is auto farming berries for me to create redstone flux so these generators are really unique and they are pretty cool all right last and most assuredly not least we have the nether star generator and uh, if you haven't caught on already these generators will span anywhere from the extreme early game to the extreme end game and this thing is a monster this will produce 40,960 redstone flux per tick, like a boss, and it will produce 8.3 million redstone flux in two minutes. Oh, wait a minute. That's not 8.3. That's 98 million redstone flux in two minutes. Okay. 
Obviously, Nether Stars are extremely expensive. They require you killing and defeating a Wither. But if you have a Tome of Alkahest and a bunch of Wither Skeletons, preferably from maybe like a mob farm, you can basically create an infinite amount of Nether Stars and uh, make a bank of these things that will uh, rival a big reactor or any other sort of power generation out there. So um, this is one of the things that made this tutorial so worth doing. This is a this is a beast, a one single block um, little generator that can produce so much power is absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, here's the pattern. Here you're gonna need another star to make it. Some more wither skeleton or more wither skulls. Um, let me just show you what you're going to need to hook this thing up here. I've got some massive power banks. Um, but since it produce, produces 40,960 RF per tick, and the resonant energy cells, which are the um, maximum capacity thermal expansion storage devices for power, can only accept up to 10,000 redstone flux per tick, you're actually going to need five of these to harness the full um, amount that this thing can put out at once. So let me go ahead and grab another star. Okay, and I'm going to drop that in there. And this is going to burn for about two minutes. It's going to create a massive amount of power. Um, you can see that I'm loading up here in all five of these. And uh, if I was to remove just one of these, you would notice that I would start getting a power backup. And that's because this is uh, representative of the 960 RF per tick that these resonant energy cells just simply cannot handle. So if you do set this up, make sure you have at least five of these. Um, hooked up to the nether star generator otherwise you're going to be um, losing a little bit of power unless you don't care about power and that's fine by me um, you can use these capacitor banks from ender io which are really useful because they can absorb the full amount of a nether star generator um, if i look inside of here um, don't mean to showcase another mod here uh, this will give me the total amount produced 98 million 304 thousand um, redstone flux it will store 225 million and this is a multi-block structure haven't made a tutorial on this yet I apologize um, but anyways if you hook this up directly to here it has a maximum input of 45,000 RF per tick if I was to remove a, a layer of this it wouldn't be able to handle that much I think this is the minimum size that you can build to uh, um, accept the amount of power that the nether star generator puts out um, so these are extremely useful if you do want to uh, eliminate the need for those resident resident energy cells Okay, I have this beast power storage device here, and uh, four of these things gave me a grand total of almost 400 million power. So if I go ahead and grab some more nether stars, you can see how quickly these fill up. And again, you could set a timer system up to these generators to deploy um, nether stars every two minutes if you were consuming that amount of power. Mad shammy, uh, which you could probably do. Um, but anyways, this is a huge machine. Um, we can put up to uh, 640 million redstone flux, and you can see how fast that redstone flux is just flooding in there. Okay, so we have almost 160,000 redstone um, flux per second going in here off of these four, okay? Nether stars are not that hard to make once you have a mob farm, so this is an absolutely epic way to generate power. All right, and that's all 12 generators. This is a really awesome mod, and I hope you like these generators as much as I do. Um, I hope you can appreciate the time that went into making this tutorial, despite the fact that it was only about 20 minutes long, um, and despite the fact that it was completely unnecessary for me to put this much effort into a tutorial. But in any case, um, there are a lot of different mods that were showcased here. For instance, this door is the uh, Dimensional Doors mod, which we do have a tutorial out on our um, channel. These angled blocks are carpenter's blocks, which we just put out a tutorial on. Um, the teleporter was from Industrial Craft 2, that little door right there. Um, we do have a lot of different tutorials on our website that you can check out. Please uh, drop us a line on Facebook, on our channel, um, on our website, and so on and so forth. We have a lot of great stuff um, to offer, and we hope you appreciate our tutorials. So check us out in all these places here, and as always, guys, remember to stay poised.